Meanwhile, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Mark Milley, calls China's successful hypersonic weapon system test, quote, very close to a Sputnik moment, referring to the Russian satellite that launched uh, the space, space age, of course. Now, Miley is the first, General Miley is the first Pentagon official to confirm the Chinese military had performed a successful launch of a nuclear-capable hypersonic weapon, increasing already heightened tensions in the region, as you just uh, noted, and it's getting worse. Joining us now is the director of George Mason University's National Security Law and Policy Program, Jamil Jaffer. So, Jamil, how do you see it? Is this a significant threat? Yeah, Arthel, look, I think that uh, obviously the ability of the Chinese to deliver nuclear weapons or even conventional warheads uh, through a hypersonic capability is an important uh, new step for them. Uh, the ability to bring a weapon out from space uh, like an ICBM would, but to be able to maneuver it uh, the way these glide vehicles can at such high speeds that can evade our existing missile defenses uh, is a huge step forward and a huge potential threat to the United States if, in fact, we get in a conflict with them, whether that's over Taiwan or some other area, uh, as Eric was just talking about. So is this is there a dramatic a diplomatic response or is is it there a, this is a call for something more dramatic well, look, I think that in a lot of areas, China is seeking to uh, engage us and get ahead of us, whether that's uh, quantum, uh, semiconductors, uh, or the like. Uh, China's making advances, and we're not necessarily keeping up the way we should. Uh, we've been testing hypersonic vehicles for a while, but back in 2018, even, a uh, U.S. defense official testified that they were testing 20 times as many hypersonic types of capabilities uh, than we were. And so we need to stop playing catch up, right, as we yeah. are today, I mean, being surprised that the Chinese are testing these kind of of vehicles and really starting to get ahead of this. Uh, and look, this is true, Arthel, not just in military weapon systems. It's true in rare earth metals where the Chinese are trying to corner the market. Uh, and it's true in other areas like semiconductors where they've got a huge chunk of the market and are threatening a huge part of it there in Taiwan. Yeah, no, you, all excellent points. Meanwhile, back to the hypersonic missile testing. Uh, there's always a, a why and a why now behind this type of testing. What is it in this instance? Well, you know, I think one is just the timing of the development the Chinese are, are engaging in. They're moving forward on the hypersonic vehicles as they have for a while. Uh, so this is just another step in the same direction they've already been going. But of course, this is all takes place at the same time uh, that they've been getting very aggressive with Taiwan. 52 uh, uh, fighter jets and bombers together uh, went in Taiwanese airspace just in the last few weeks. Uh, the Taiwanese announced that we have some uh, some military uh, members there in Taiwan, not nearly enough to defend yeah. the island, but they're supporting them. So that may be part of this. There may be an effort to, for the Chinese to say, hey, look, you know, we've got capabilities too. keep an eye on what we're doing. Uh, listen, I wanted to ask you this. What you know, how does I'm going to bring it to politics now because I want to ask you, you know, about the gridlock in Congress and the pervasive mm. tribal politics. Does this not only threaten our democracy, does it also threaten our national security, especially in the face of a very, very aggressive China? It absolutely does. You know, uh, Arthel, we have got to come together as a nation, uh, putting aside politics and recognize there are very real threats in the world, uh, whether they're th threats from terrorists or threats from nation states like China, who are inveterately opposed to uh, America and what we want to do in the world and our leadership of the world community. And so that's going to be really hard to do if we continue to be divided as a nation the way we are today. I happen to have the good luck to work for two members of Congress, Senator Bob Corker and Congressman Mike Rogers, both of whom work closely with their Democratic counterparts, uh, you know, Dutch Ruppersberger from Maryland on the House Intelligence Committee and Bob Menendez on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Work can be done across the aisle on these critically important issues. We just have to be willing to do so. And right now, Arthel, unfortunately, the situation in D.C. doesn't make that very, very possible. We've got to get beyond that as a nation and as a political body and expect better of our politicians. Meanwhile, our adversaries, <clears throat> excuse me, are making advances and we're stuck on stupid. Jamil Jaffer. Jaffer. Jeez. Thank you for joining us, Jamil. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.